Here is how I built a brake drum forge for my backyard hobby. This is the type of semi-truck brake drum that I used. Using quarter inch scrap steel, a circle was cut and placed in the bottom of the drum to cover the holes. A secondary hole was cut for the tweer to pass through. Using a torch to cut the bottom and sides needed for the fire pot. 3 8 inch plate was used for the bottom and quarter inch plate for the sides. The openings at the front and back of the forge were cut using an angle grinder with a metal cutting wheel. The fire pot rests on the lower rim of the brake drum, so no welding is necessary. Here the extra area for the coal is welded on and a small ramp is cut to fit over a weak spot on the table. Welding on the tweer and any final touch-up welds that needed to be done. All welded up and ready to go in the drum. Holes were cut in the bottom plate for airflow through the tweer. And the fire pot is finished and seated ready for the insulating clay to be placed into it. Here's a list of the materials you're going to need for this part of the job. This particular forge took three batches to fully insulate. A batch was used to fill the bottom of the drum. Another batch was used on each side of the fire pot. Working in layers on the sides and using a piece of 2x4 to compact and fill the voids. You pack the clay all the way to the top of the drum. I let the clay cure in the direct sunlight for the better part of a day. Charcoal was used to facilitate the drying process in the bottom of the fire pot. Here's a quick tour of my forge. The air inlet, ash dump, and using a kidnapped hair dryer for the bellows. The coal feed side, and around to the working side of this forge. With a coal fire started, I used a piece of rebar that I had so I could make my first tool, a coal rake. With the rebar heated up, I used the face of the hammer to flatten approximately three to four inches back. Then, using the peening side, I tried to widen the rake a little. After bending and quenching the rake side, I heated and drew out the handle side to a point, and then hammered it into a loop around the horn of an anvil. Well, here it is. It's not very straight. The loop is off center, and sure as hell isn't very pretty. But I have the satisfaction of knowing that I made it, and it works for tool number one. Now I know why this is so damn addictive. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll post a new video as soon as I can.